Note that this is an opinionated piece based on my personal opinions. Although this content in the video is factual to some degree, it is very heavily subjective and based on my own personal opinions and outlooks of Yu-Gi-Oh itself. Don't get too bent out of shape. GOAT format is one of the most popular formats of Yu-Gi-Oh and for good reason. It's an older era of Yu-Gi-Oh filled with interaction, nuanced gameplay, and skill testing matchups from a wide variety of decks. It tested players decision tree lines, ability to play with virtually perfect knowledge, and was a sacred battleground where only the best and most skillful players who thought 30 turns in advance won. At least that's what the GOAT format elitists say. In reality, GOAT format is an unintuitive format surrounded by bomb cards where the only real resource management and decision making took place in the form of, hmm, which monster am I going to set, Sangan or Graveskeeper's Spy? I personally tried to get into GOAT format and found it to be an absolute drag, so here are some of the more concrete reasons why I believe GOAT format might not as be as fun or skilled testing as you think it is. Additionally, I've noticed that a lot of you guys aren't actually subscribed according to my YouTube analytics. Please like, comment, subscribe, anything. Costs you absolutely nothing, supports the channel, goes a long way, and you're always free to unsub at any time. Now, on to reason number one. Reason number one is of course the bomb cards. Extremely powerful cards have always existed in every TCG, and Yu-Gi-Oh is no exception. However, when a format is virtually built around said cards, oftentimes these cards being able to just win a game outright within itself based on what it provides it makes the game extremely unfun to play. Heavy Storm forces players just to play around the threat of its existence. Graceful Charity, Discarding Serpent, or Double Knight Assailant can virtually just win the resource game for you. BLS is arguably the best monster in the game for, for a good reason. It's a free summon and allows for either immediate OTK or spot removal in specific scenarios. Pot of Greed draws two for literally free. The Liquid Duo rips two for virtually zero cost. I understand that playing around cards is one thing, but when these sort of cards are irresponsible to in the vast majority of situations, remember kids, yeah Karibo, a pot of greed. It makes the format feel extremely sacky and luck dependent based on who can draw into their power cards. Reason number two for me are the decks in GOAT format. We can all pretend that there are about 30 to different 40 meta decks in GOAT format, from Gravekeepers to Warrior Beatdown to Monarch to MP Jar to Pac-Man. But in reality, there are only about three real quote-unquote decks in this metagame. Goat Control, Thunder Dragon Chaos, and uh, an FTK. Yeah, an FTK is one of the best uh, goat decks. Thunder Dragon Chaos and Goat Control are arguably just the same deck with different control engines. If you want to think of it one way, think of the difference between Subterra and True Draco. Sure, they're not the exact same deck and they both play completely differently, but they more or less just do the same thing, they more or less accomplish the same goal of just sitting on a floodgate and passing, and they more or less play very similarly in their playstyles, even if their cards do do different things. And the fact that library and spell economics FTK still exist in this metagame as prominent options just speaks volumes for what this format exemplifies. Dumb slow control mirrors where people try and get their bomb cards after 30 turns, or getting FTK'd. Quote unquote real GOAT players will say that the underrepresentation of FTK and top cuts mean that the deck was never good. Note that Danger Dark World Firewall FTK didn't take up a majority of spots in its prime and was arguably the best deck of its time. It was only really hampered down by its insane price tag, being the danger monsters, of course, a lack of players wanting to play an FTK. Remember, kids, FTKs are kind of dumb and boring to play, as well as its extremely short lifespan after being discovered and, of course, subsequently banned. Reason number three is the most objective reason on this list. It just feels really slow and boring to play. Like I said earlier, these games revolve around combo mirrors and sacky cards being recycled over and over with Mask of Darkness or Magician of Faith or just searching BLS off of like a Sangan or something. I've played both Control Floodgate decks and Combo Bullshit, and I can say I'd rather play either one of those decks in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! infinite times over, over playing mirrors and mirrors over and over again, or maybe 1 in 20 games on Dueling Books Ladder. I play against a deck that isn't monotonously boring to play against, where I can name literally every single card in their deck card for card. Goat format has been solved to a point where virtually everyone is aware of everything in the format, which to me, in my opinion, is absolutely dreadful for anyone to play in. I won't deny that GOAT format does have its benefits. It's a great format to play if you want to teach a new player how to play Yu-Gi-Oh, as well as if you're the type of person who likes ex extremely heavy control matchups, but just like modern Yu-Gi-Oh, like Striker Mirrors, like holy hell, those things are so boring to play, like I think a single game would go into time virtually 90% of the time. But GOAT format's downsides for me are just so numerous and glaring that I personally feel okay with just never touching this format seriously in any capacity. I really don't think GOAT format is a fun, competitive format to play for anyone, and if you disagree with me, I would love to hear your feedback in the comments section down below. 
Is guilt control still the wet control mirror of your dreams, or has the illusion been stripped away for what it really is? Please comment again below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. It costs you nothing, supports the channel, and you're always free to unsubscribe at any time. Remember kids, take it easy.